Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everybody who joins the session today. Um, it's the topic myopia management with also K lenses. And uh, I have the pleasure to have Dr. Jaume Paunet here um, talking about exactly this topic for uh, one hour. Um, Jaume um, obtained his PhD in optics and uh, optometry with the topic myopia control with radial refractive gradient contact lenses. He holds the Spaniard National Council of Optics and Optometry Award um, for his work about myopia control and contact lenses in 1992 and for a new contact lens overnight orthokeratology design for hy hyperopia in 2010. He has a, a patent on two orthokeratology lens designs, um, a myopia control lens and a keratoconus lens um, designs um, he patented. So we have, actually, we have a contact lens expert here, uh, Dr. Jaume uh, Paunet, who will um, give us the talk today. So currently he works as a clinician in the Centro Medico Tecnon in Barcelona, Spain, and he is an associate professor for specialty contact lens at the Faculty of Optics and Optometry of Terrassa University in Spain. And here he is with his beautiful background of the author K lens. So welcome, Jaume. I'm super happy to have you here and uh, talk about um, your baby, actually, and your topic, which is also keratology lenses and also myopia uh, management. Thank you, David. <laughs> it's a real pleasure to be here. So let's go for the presentation. Okay, perfect. Okay, that picture is my cent is the center I, where I work in Barcelona. Is Centro Medico Tecnon. It's a beautiful place to to do my job in clinical area. <laughs> So let's go for the talk about myopia management with ortho -K lenses. And just uh, as an introduction, this is a slide that many of you have seen a long time ago, or many times, of all the Taiwanese guys with all wearing glasses for myopia. And we have the prediction for the future that um, they made by Brian Holden about the prediction in 2015, uh, 50, about the 50% the of the population in the global population will have myopia. So it's a global pandemic now different than coronavirus, but global pandemic. And one of the points here is um, that the slowdown myopia is important. And uh, the reason but because it's important is about the risk we have in health for uh, the, in the future. Or myops will get more chances to have different diseases as, for example, macular degeneration. So one point that uh, everywhere we are discussing is the importance to remain below minus six diopters. Because at that point, we increase our chances of have uh, loss of vision uh, by many, many high ratio. But any any diopter in myopia counts. Even a low myop has more chances to have a problem with vision that that no, no myopes. So it's important to take care of any kind of myopia from the beginning. We have the chance in 2005 that uh, Pauline Cho present his Loric study. Loric study was the first scientific evidence that myopia could be controlled uh, using orthokeratology. And as uh, Thomas Vizhespi said, that is a, a secondary effect because ortho -K was created to correct myopia, to correct vision for far and distance. So today we are much better because we have uh, different meta-analysis that they showed in the past. Uh, this is one in 2015, but today we have even much, much more evidence that myopia could be slowed down by ortho -K. Not all the child uh, has the same result. For example, if you look here, you could have the result within these lines. So some child will have a beautiful control and other child will remain not exactly perfect, but all the all of them has some effect in myopia control. So this is important and that plays ortho -K, uh, as a gold standard in myopia control for contact lenses. 
Also, K, okay, we know that is uh, doing in three uh, uh, parts of the lens. The central zone is the, the, the part that flattens apical corneal radius. Then we have the reverse curve that is, creates the mid peripheral ring and the Lyman curves that help to center the lens. So it works uh, uh, basically in epithelial area. Here we have an OCT made by Juan Bolivar that is really beautiful. And we could see before ortho -K the thickness of the epithelium and just after ortho -K how the epithelium is thinned in the central zone and the mid peripheral zone. So, so the peripheral zone, and in the mid peripheral area, we have a thinning, uh, a, a th increase of sorry, nothing, thickness, increase of thickness. So we can see here uh, 46 microns of difference from the beginning. But this is because we have a thinning on the center, and and a thickening on the mid periphery, and that changes the shape of the eye. So let's go for different topics or different points to have in account about how it works, how it uh, is the efficacy better or worse. And the first point is about age and myopia control. One thing we, we know from a long time is the, that children with low myopia has less effect with ortho -K than uh, children with higher myopia. It seems that, but the, the point we know is the age is important, and we know as well that children with higher ages have has better control than children with lower ages. So thing is mixed. And here we have a beautiful war from Antonio Queiroz, and we can see here the chance to have an increase of 0 0.10 millimeters axial length per year using ortho -K. So, for example, a child with six years old and minus eight, sorry, a child uh, with minus eight will have a chance to get 50% of increase of 10 millimeters per year at age of nine. But a child with a minus one, they will not reach that until 15 years old. So this means that children with a lower amount of myopia, they have more chance to increase uh, the actual length per year using ortho that than children that have higher quantity of myopia. This keeps us in the mind that in this, at the same age, ha, when you have more myopia, higher myopia, you have less chance to increase myopia with ortho -K. This is the first point. Of course, when it here is not included faster progressors or moderate progressors or lower progressors, that is another, another different issue. So the second topic we will look at is about pupil size. The pupil size, we know for the work of Peter Chen that uh, in case of ortho -K, children that has larger pu pupil areas, they have better control than children with the smaller pupil areas. And this reminds us about the interaction between the, the shape of we are the treatment zone we are doing in cornea, and they, that interaction with the light, with the impose, uh, the focus in retina and the pupil size. And we will go that point later. The third point we need to know is about high order aberrations. High order aberrations, for example, spheric aberration or coma, or just high order aberrations are related to better control. There are more works than this one from Hiraoka. Uh, they show us that higher the change in high order aberrations, better the control in myopia, better the control in axial length for the future in ortho-K. What we know that at the moment we are changing the shape of the treatment zone is not only the size of the treatment zone, it's the shape of the treatment zone, the, the distribution in power of that, that, that optical zone that is changing aberration. So we are starting to know what pupil size, the shape about creating by high order aberrations, the diameter, Many uh, small points we are working at the moment to think later how to improve, how to do better. 
So the topic point four is impulse the focus. This is a de dose dependent response. This is a work that Alexandra Benavente did in the past. It's a very beautiful work in marmosets. And at the moment, he changed the shape of the lenses. You can see here the lenses about the, 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 the quantity of plus power they have more plus power or less plus power around more optical zone there so more retina with the focus imposed you have a better uh control in action length than um and less up, less area imposed so it's a dose dependent response at least in animals so let this it's make us to think about the the width of the red ring or peripheral plus power we have on our corneas. So the plus power ring is the topic number five. It, the plus power ring is as well the mid peripheral stepped rim. This is the, that area that appears in the topography in red color, and this is the area that changes the peripheral refraction, moving the image forward or inducing more high order aberration. So this work of Wang in China, they, they divide it in 36 sections, the topography. They, they cut these 36 sections and they look for the peak of that uh, mid peripheral stepped ring or the plus power ring. And they measure this and linked this with the axial length grow after one year. And what they found here is that, that to, to reach the 80% the of chances to have a bed uh, axial length control less than 0 0.2 millimeters per year in Chinese eye, you need a 4.5 diopter changes on your red ring or your mid peripheral part power. So they, here we are talking about the quantity of changes in plus power we need to do. So we are thinking in different points that is giant pieces of the puzzle. We know that when we do uh, minus six, we have a smaller treatment zone and um, with higher quantity of changes and when we are doing a smaller quant uh, amount of ref correction in north okay we have a larger optical zone and less market red ring so we have a larger and less market and a smaller and more market red ring so more change or, or less change in plus power in the periphery and we know from the first slide that children with higher myops with ortho k perform better so we have different topographical maps after ortho k that links with all that topics we already said uh, some minutes ago then we arrive to the join the plus power ring and pupil size. We did a, a work with this, and uh, this is a topographical map where we where we can see the pupil uh, diameter here. We can see in the dot line the diameter of the plus power ring or the mid peripheral stepped um, zone. And with that, we can measure in vertical and horizontal diameter, and we can relate both. So what we did, we did the uh, first uh, experiment is uh, just to place uh, in 71 children uh, lenses for ortho case, same design as well. All, all the time it was DRL design, and we create the lenses with 6.6, 6, 5.6, 5, and 4.7 millimeters optical zone diameter, same design, and we obtain a change in the treatment optical zone in cornea. So we can change the, the treatment optical zone diameter, changing the back optical zone diameter of our lenses. This is depending on the design. Other designs like CRT, they, they found that the change from six to five millimeters, it changes not so much in the treatment zone diameter in the cornea. So we, ne we need to see in the future about what is what changes are induced using different designs. But the point is we can change the treatment zone diameter changing the back optical zone diameter. As well, we can do it changing the reverse curve as well and other parts of the lens. 
And this is important for this. This is the, um, the study we performed. It was 71 children. We divide in two groups. One, it was a uh, back optical zone diameter larger than five millimeters diameter. And the second group, it was back optical zone diameter smaller than five millimeters diameter. And the uh, smaller back optical zone diameter that create a smaller treatment zone diameter in the cornea, they obtain a smaller, less axial length eye grow after one year at least the half. So it's really, really interesting because the value that we obtain with the larger back optical zone diameter, that is the usual diameter, is close to the normal uh, results we obtain after one year for ortho -K. But if we obtain a much less axial low grow after one year, we increase the percentage of the, of the, of the reduction or we increase the distance in absolute values. And the second point we, we did, it was we moved to three groups. We separated that children in three groups. The first group, it was uh, children that they have larger uh, red diameter for the red ring compared to the pupil size. This is the second group that they have the similar pupil size and uh, red ring. And the last group, it was a smaller treatment zone diameter, so smaller red ring diameter, and that compared to the pupil size. So you can see here is a very huge difference. For the first group, it's 0 0.17, 0 0.10, and 0 0.04 millimeters axial length growth after one year. This is a retros retrospective study, and the three groups, it was not a balance, so we, we need to take that results with careful, with uh, some distance. But it's the first study published about these results in the, in the literature, and it could help us to think that modifying the lenses, modifying, customizing the fit, we can improve our results for the future, getting very, very high results. Of course, every child responds differently, and we have some child that are fast progressors, so this will be a different result in that child than others. So at the moment, we um, look the lenses that we have at the moment is almost all the same. Maybe you can tell the difference. And we need to know that uh, it's a 33 birthday, fourth, okay? but they still look the same lens. They still look the same lens because we are already, lenses was de developed in 90s. It was to create, to control, to correct myopia, sorry, to correct myopia, and it's not changed for now. So we need to move to, to designs in ortho case, specifically designed to control myopia. And the question is how to obtain a treatment zone diameter smaller. So one way is to increase the third layer thickness under the lens. We have the same cornea. Lenses were for one week after, uh, before to take the topography map. And we can see here the first lens is a very a high third layer thickness. Here is around 20, 25 microns. We have obtained a smaller optical zone treatment. Smaller optical zone treatment. Here we have a lined lens, we have a large treatment zone, and here we have a flat lens with extremely large optical zone, and a, and a point here of distortion that is uh, quite tiny. So when we flat too much, we obtain a stain in an optical zone. So what we can do to reduce the optical zone size and obtain a shape more spherical, just to increase the layer thickness on the center, make your lens steeper. It's so stupid, but very straightforward with the same design. You can use different designs. Here we can see the difference compared. They, are, they have different reverse curve from CRT or Dreamlight. This is a study for Marcotte Collard, and they found the different size of the red uh, ring or plus power ring in the different designs. So having the same optical zone diameter, but having different reverse curve uh, shapes, we you obtain different, different treatment zones. 
but of course we can customize lenses and we can we can go for a customized lens changing the diameter here we have the lens from six to five here we can see the six to five here is the six millimeters to five millimeters that's the simplest way to do it and also you can go for different designs like my my multifocal orthokeratology from Leuchter. This is not available in the US, it's only in Switzerland. Or the lenses that develop for Eddie Chow in US that they make a spherical and a smaller optical zone. This is different design you have in the market. So um, these lenses, it changes the optical zone from... Uh, a spherical to a, sorry a spherical to a spherical and here you can see more clear what is doing is changing the height you have on the tear layer at the end of the optical zone making the optical zone a spherical and this create a change on the topographical maps Eddie Chow obtained a beautiful results, not published, but you can see here that independent of the quantity on the amount of myopia baseline, he obtained in red a more or less similar axial length elongation for five years long uh, as the ametropic children with the clear study. With the green, it was his results with the normal six millimeter optical zone lenses, spherical normal lenses. Following that, I develop a lens that its name is DRL Prevention. Here is the evolution from DRL from six millimeter optical zone is a regular lens. The same DRL that two tier reservoir and in a smaller optical zone in five millimeter optical zone, what we use for the study. And here is the new lens that is called DRL Prevention that what is doing is a smaller optical zone and very enhanced tear layer thickness here. So it's increasing the, the suction forces to create a more deep, more Im important red ring in the cornea. Here is the example. On the right side, we can see a lens, a uh, regular DRL for uh, one, mm, one diopter myo. On the left, we can see prevention design for one diopter myo. It's the same correction in the center in the apical zone for see, see clear and far, but uh, the red ring or mid peripheral ring or plus power ring is much, much, much powerful. Here is the results of our study compared in, in peripheral refraction. You have the baseline peripheral refraction for the eyes, and then we have this is the in red for regular ortho K lens, and in blue, this diff new design for the same amount of correction in the center. So we change the shape of the peripheral refraction. We move the image shell in front. We increase our spherical, spherical aberration. And we have an res internal result that show us that the result is really, really, really nice. So the topic nine is to control, to monitorize, to control myopia control. Okay. And he's just, uh, just doing with axial length row. This is the different graphs we have in the literature about what is normal uh, about the axial length row along the years. Here's a new, a new study appeared this week about the treatment on my side treatment compared to the myops in a score and or, or in the study uh, myops and emetropic child and they say that the uh, interesting point is the child for my side and the child that we are doing ortho k what we are doing is we we have actual elongation similar to the actual elongation that will have a emetropic child when I did my PhD in 2005 about uh, amyopic lenses for myopia control, I said already that uh, this is not the objective to have a, a totally halt in axial length row. We need to uh, avoid the increase in axial length that they, they have in myops, and we need to obtain the same axial length growth that an emetropic child will have, because an emetropic child continue to have an axial length growth along the years. Very small, and this one is the point we need to reach it. This is the way to compare, really, not to compare one group to other and we have a percentage. We need to compare what we obtain with the axial length grow in regular children. Here is a study we did in Spain with 3,600 children. 
about the axial length along the uh, with the different ages. And we, this is the data joined to other data in Germany and Australia that is inside myopia master device very soon. Because we need to have a, a, a model to compare what we are doing to know if we are working properly or not with our children. So we arrive to the magnificent myopia master device. This is a lovely device from Oculus. That is important because uh, today to control using refraction is no longer interesting. We need to go for measurements in axial length. You can see here that the axial length in myopia master repetibility is 0.05 diopters, that is 0.02 millimeters. When we are working in refraction, we have an error around plus 0.5 diopters up and down from the real refraction. If you are really good, you could say a quarter diopter, but here we are taking five times less measurements. We have five times more accuracy or 10 times more accuracy than a, a refraction. And moreover, the important thing in myopia control is not the myopia you have that could be refractive or the, the lens issue. The most important thing is the axial length. Axial length, we need to, to, to try to avoid 26 millimeters in any child. After 26 millimeters, we arrive to the higher levels of high chances to have problems in the in the adulthood. So measure axial length is the future. Measure the axial length is the way to monitor, and measure axial length is the way you could know what to do with the children you have in front. Myopia Master is a really good device. It's, uh, it includes uh, seven steps. Let's go step by step and you will see that the beauty. So the first step is about the measurement itself. Um, you can have the, the biometry, you have the refraction with auto refractometer, and you have the keratometry. You have all three data. Biometry is repeat, repeated six times and you have the average, aver refraction for three times, you have the average and so on. So it's a really, really accurate measurement. Very easy, very straightforward to take with children. Uh, the device is, is itself, it follows the child, so it's really, really easy to take pictures of the child. So the next um, data is the data analysis. You have uh, you have uh, this plot at the moment. You have this plot. We will change in the next future with the data uh, I showed you already. And you got you have a comparison about your children and the mean value, the normal normal value. You know if it's in the mean value, is it up there or low than that? And you have a projection about the children evolution the future with a more or less the amount of refraction that he will get in the future so you could take that your measurement you are going there you show that your parents and you say your children is in the in the mean average is uh, over that average or low that average so you know the risk to develop high myopia in the future or the risk to have problems in the future and also you have this point here that you can tell the parents, okay, we have minus two today, but in the future we will have a minus five. This is this point here. May I interrupt you for a second? Absolutely. Um, uh, there, there's a question uh, popping in exactly for this slide. Um, so the, the question is, what's the minimum age of children which is involved in your study in the Spanish data? Yeah, we have uh, already some children below six. But uh, the main quantity of children was uh, above, above six years old. So from six to 18 years old, it was the main all children we, we, we get from the study. Yeah. Below six, it was difficult to measure. So we, we, we avoid to, we try to avoid that children in the study. By chance, uh, there is not so many children that they have myopia before six, six. 
uh, age six years old. But if you 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 have a children with um, six diopters at three years old, maybe it will be difficult to measure. And I'm sure you will get uh, axial length that will be very high in the curve. So it's not a trouble for that. You will you will know absolutely that this is a trouble. So okay, and then we have the next step that is the um, questionnaire for parents. This is really good. This is really good because it's uh, very useful for the education to the parents. So the first you ask is how many how many parents you have, myops, the time and outdoor activity, the near working activity in school. So you you have different uh, questions here, very interesting. Uh, you could divide the time you, you stay in the computer, in books, in a smartphone, and discuss with the parents, with the child, about the issues that appears for the distance to, of reading and the time of reading. And then here is not in slide, but moving that, that cursor here, you will have a, a happy face or, or sad face that will help that the children understand the importance of that. Once you did that uh, questionnaire, you are right to recommendations. You have this plot with your recommendation of atropine, ortho case, soft lenses, and so on. And you could uh, send this to the parents to have a home lecture. You have a, 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 printed, a printed thing. This is the analysis. This is analysis. Uh, of seven, of five, five pages with the, the data, with uh, the, the part of the questionnaire, what is myopia, how to manage that, and so on. That is really good. You could send to parents by email. You could print it for the parents. It's really good for education because in myopia control, we have, of course, to think what we will use. We will use ortho K, uh, soft lenses, or tropine, whatever, or outdoors. But the education for the parents, for the education for the patient is the most important area. Almost any child needs to understand that reading closer or reading too much time and not staying outdoors is a, is a problem for the future. So it's education is very important. That this is a magnificent tool to educate our parents, our children. Here is uh, what you have uh, uh, with a child with a long time uh, treatment. And we can see this case, uh, for example, this case is a, a, a girl that uh, came to me a uh, long time ago, and she had a progression around almost one diopter per year. They, they ha she had minus six at 10 years old, and she get already almost 25. In the left eye, you see almost 26 millimeters the, uh, eye, eye long. So that is the DRL we fit on that case. And the result in the topography there. And the result in plotted in myopia master here is the measurement from 10 years old to 18 years old. And we can see here that is following a faster progression than the regular emetropic child, but is not so faster than myops here. If we, we don't have it, but if we have the, the, the axial length previous, it will be very steep line uh, for sure in the before ortho care. Here on the right side, you have a, a QR that you could go to the links on the Myopia Master webpage where you could find this report and other reports, very interesting to understand how to perform and, and, and follow Myopia Master and Myopia Control. Myopiamaster.com is a good page to follow that. So then we have a question, is when we start, and the, the thing we know is any diopter counts, the younger children progress faster, so uh, the earlier you start to control myopia, the better. That's the conclusion. And then we need to know when to stop. And when to stop is another point very important. We know that um, at 15 years old, half of the patients will have myopia more or less stable, but um, some 10% will still grow at age 30. 
And some person don't stop, uh, they have myopia increasing even at four years old. So in my children, in the children I, I have in treatment, what we do is if some, in some time they are lazy or they have with the foot the lenses on or they have some trouble with the lenses at, at the level of comfort and they want to finish the tre ortho K treatment, then what we do is we, we, we stop the treatment and we follow with the axial length measurement for several for six months if it's uh, stable okay we continue one one year more and then we follow that if it's not stable he need to come back to resume ortho k if not another way to do that is change to switch ortho k to soft multifocal lenses for daily you they use or glasses with atropine or today we have all the glasses from Hoya and soon by Essilor that will help to to have different ways to manage that kind of children but follow the axial length changes at the moment you stop your treatment is extremely important to be sure that you are in the good place or not. For example, if the if the if the person want to perform LASIK surgery, you need to be sure that myopia is stopped. So at 25 years old, for example, you stop and you follow with axial length to be sure that it's possible to do surgery. So thank you for that. I'm ready for your questions. I guess it's a really amazing topic. We go quite faster with many slides, but um, yeah, we can go deeply. And any any topic we 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 release, you can you can stay one hour for every topic. <laughs> Pupil, the red ring, and many others. Go okay, for the questions, David. Thank you very much, Jaume. I think this was a beautiful presentation. We had a quick talk this morning and uh, Jaume told me, oh, I have so many slides. I would like to tell so much to people, but I have to I have to take out of, uh, a lot of things because there's only one hour. Now we are pretty fast, um, but there are plenty of questions. So let's start with it. <clears throat> um, so first of all, small treatment zones um, for ortho-K lenses. Uh, they can also decrease the visual performance for children. What's yeah. your experience uh, in it? Okay. Um, one, the point here is we are in a hot topic about uh, to, the, to reduce the treatment zone diameter, right? To improve the myopia control. And we are focused on that point. But one one idea that is uh, appearing about this, the, my last latest study is to take in account the, the pupil size. So if you have a larger pupil size, maybe it's not really necessary to reduce the optical zone treatment. If you are using this regarding that, that uh, diameter of the pupil, then you have less problems because when the the size of the pupil is smaller, you have a better quality of vision. So you can reduce that treatment zone diameter without creating an impairment, without creating a problem with the quality of the vision, the subjective vision, not, not the measure with a barometer, but yes, the subjective, the quality of the subjective vision. So you can play with the diameter of the pupil size for adjust your treatment zone diameter. On the on the other point, on the other side, I have no complaints. Children don't complain, so it's uh, not a problem with children to make these increasing operations, that, uh, this reducing the reduce that uh, size or increase the width of the plus power changes on the ring. It's really no problem with the children. In adults, it's another story, but in children, no troubles. Okay, I can believe so. Thanks for the answer. Um, I have another question here. So what is the best way to measure the red powering with the topographer? Um, point to point or average? My goodness, this is a difficult, uh, difficult uh, answer there. This is a long, it's a big discussion on that point. This is a big, big, big discussion. Okay, the first thing you need to, to think is the following thing. Topographer 
in general, topographers are Placido-based systems, not others, but in, in general, they are Placido-based systems. And Placido is using the arc step. And David can answer that much better than me because he's the real expert on that point. So we, if, if, if we start to think that inaccuracy we have in the values we obtain for the corneas, when it's not a regular cornea, when it's a normal regular cornea, more or less all the topographers perform good. But at the moment you have the change of the shapes, there start to measure not true. And the second point is we have two, mainly two kind of maps, axial map and tangential or instantaneous maps. Axial map is a map that the, that the studies they use for measure that uh, plus power ring, but it's not the current because this is the, it's not the real power, it's the distance from the surface to the axis. So it, and the distance from the axis to the, to, the, to the point on the cornea is not the real radius and not the real power. And this kind of map as the maps that are used for do the refractive maps. So refractive maps and axial maps, they are giving a lo lower power than the real. Tangential maps could provide more power than the real because this is this kind of placido systems. But for me, I prefer to use tangential or instantaneous maps because it's the true shape of the cornea. And then um, this is not really clear about if you want to measure the power, it's better to, if you have um, if you have point to point, the easy way to do is click on the point that you have the, 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 the center of the ring where you see the most uh, red color, the highest red. This is the mean at the center of the ring. This is the point to click. The problem you have is you, you click there, you will have a, a local point. This is not the average point. The average, the average value is some topographers provide it and some topographers don't provide it. If you have an average, it's better, but it's point to point is difficult. You have another point is uh, in my study, we measure that is relevant in horizontal, so probably it's relevant in horizontal nasal to temporal points, but not relevant relevant in vertical. So we need to look at in which site is more important, maybe nasal, but we are not sure at the moment. So it's many things to look at. I don't do that. I don't measure that in my patients. I just look the picture and with that I have enough. But <laughs> if you want to click there, I recommend tangential and the red, mod red point in the middle of the ring. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I think this answers the question. Um, so with a myopia master, so we go back to the myopia master device. Um, it's possible to show what's the future outcome of the uh, refraction in the adulthood or also extra length. Um, the question is, um, does the myopia master show also uh, um, the treatment? So, for example, um, the, the treatment of also kerat keratology lenses, what's the outcome in, in, in future? Uh, for example, 60% or something like that. Yeah, there's not doing that in uh, uh, myopia master. You have in Brian Holden Institute uh, uh, a plot of that. They did a long time ago. And this is a projection. This is a... Um, this is beautiful to explain to the parents, but the problem, the problem with that kind of uh, projections, they are made in a, in a fake way. You are thinking that myopia will be controlled by 45% by ortho K. That is not the truth because some child has better answer, some child that worse. It depends on the amount of, for example, um, the results from um, polling show in high myopia was reaching 60 something percent of control and other results with uh, Caucasian eyes in Spain, they get uh, less than 40 percent control. But this is when we compare our orthogate group to the control grouping with glasses during two years. 
And what we know from uh, results from long-term studies uh, that uh, Hiraoka um, and Kakita, they, they found that after some years, the result is not the same. You lose effectivity if you compare both groups. And this is because the group with glasses, they, they already is slowing down the actual length growth with natural, because we know that after 15 years old, a child with glasses, the 50% of the child with using glasses for far, single vision, they will slow down eye grow after 15 years old in natural way. So if you have these two groups, you will have the same difference in actual length growth in one group to other after that data that you have before. This is not meaning that orthoK is not working anymore. That is meaning that you will get less effectivity. So if you are going to the plot and you say, I have eight years old, they have minus two, the normal growth is this one, but I will have 50% control for all, all the life of that child, you will get a, a fake result in your plot. It's a, it's a assumption, it's a projection that is not the truth. Is this useful? Yeah, it could be. Uh, for sale, maybe it could be. But at the same time, you are telling something to the parents that maybe you will not be able to accomplish in the future. So you could have in a trouble in the future. So in my point of view, it's much better to, to look at the actual link you have at the moment, know what is normal, and know what you want to get. And then you say, we will work to obtain this projection to the future and not a uh, different one that is the previous one is as more straight uh, ahead. But I know I don't discard. Maybe I could combine Oculus to put the, the actual length growth for children with myopia and the feature in the plot to compare normal to others. Let's see the feature. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, um, <laughs> sorry. <David. laughs> this is a but no. This is a very good comment because this is exactly what uh, people are asking. But maybe I can also give an answer here. Um, uh, Rami, you showed us um, that the difference between children is pretty much. For some, it works very good. For some, it work. It doesn't work so good. So what we always have in mind is that even if we show something with a myopia master, the average, what what you also showed in your slides. Uh, um, that might be totally wrong because uh, uh, treatments sometimes work much better, sometimes work much, much uh, uh, worse. And it's not so clearly known why sometimes it works better and wh why sometimes not. Of course, there are some hints, but this makes it um, pretty difficult to give um, some serious uh, predictions, uh, to be honest. And for this reason, it's not um, implemented in the system right now. But of course, in future, um, this is a very good point. Thanks, Naomi. Um, I have another question here, um, which is, uh, um, uh, yeah, I, I was recently told, so from, from, a, from a participant, uh, um, I was recently, to recently told by an ophthalmologist that even when kids use myopia control, they will then eventually have the myopia that would have in the first place. Is that true? So I was also not so clear about the question, but, um, I believe that if you control myopia and you stop the treatment, that it goes back to the, mm. to the original um, the power. Yeah, this is a long time uh, discussed topic. I um, I had an, uh, I could uh, had put a, a slide about this. There is there is not so many studies. One study is from Pauline Cho, and she she followed children uh, with ortho K, and one group discontinued it. So with that way they had they have a, a rebound, and then they resumed to the they follow for six months more. Then after the, the small rebound at the beginning, they follow more as the same line than glasses. And after they resume ortho K, they come back again to the line. So there is two, two points. The first point is we have a kind of rebound that is because the choroidal thickness. One thing that is uh, important to, to have in account 
is at the moment we place a treatment that is will be effective for myopia control, very likely they will mm, change the choroid thickness on retina. This is increases in blood there. So this is something that we will measure in the future with uh, with the myopia master. We measure the axial length before ortho K and we measure axial length after ortho K after one month. And if the treatment is working well, we will have a, a reduced uh, a change in, in a smaller axial length after one month. This could be 0 0.2, 0 0.10, 0 0.14 millimet millimeters. Um, sorry, some mi microns. So um, this is very, very small change in, the, in, in, in axial length row, but it, it happens. So this is um, a change we will measure in the future with myopia master. Then when you follow that child, it stops myopia it will have a rebound. That it means you have an axial length measurement just at the moment you finish to use ortho K and choroid will again make become thinner. So you have again an increase, a very rapidly increase in axial length in one month, in 15 days. That is the kind of rebound, but indeed is the change of choroid. And then you will follow that increase that will be parallel a normal single vision glasses. So you have not a, a worsening compared to the glasses. You have a control during the time you are using ortho K. You, ha you have a small rebound that probably, probably is the choroid. And then you follow the same ratio than single vision glasses. And if you come back again to ortho K, you have a thinning on choroid again, and you will have the same evolution that a, that a child with ortho K. So you can go up and down. You could go out and in of the treatments. Then we need more research on that. This is only one study. And in my children, in the children I, I, I follow, they, I try that they never to, to, to go, got out of ortho K until myopia is stopped and control. So I have no experience, not too much experience, but I have few cases, maybe five cases in my life that they finish ortho K. Then I move to or bifocals or atropine or move to myopia control with soft multifocal lenses. So I will never stop to use any kind of system to control myopia in that child. So I have no experience on that point. And this is real world. The other is scientific world. Scientific world is doing something that is not so beautiful. So it is not ethical. So I don't know if we'll have the answer of your question because you have a child that is using a system that is working for myopia control. Then you say now, and the, in the, in the, for the, in the shake of the signs, you will stop to wear your magnificent ortho K and you will stay one year without. I will see if you have rebound or not. So it's not ethical, right? So this is why we don't have the, the answer right now. And it's my, my advice is to follow that chain and you can, you have a, a pool of, 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 of systems you could use to control myopia, not only ortho K. So let's see what happened in the future. And ophthalmologists, they need, they need to understand this. And I have many, many friends that they know this and no problem with this point. I, I don't listen to you. You are mute, David. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for, for the questions, uh, uh, for the answer <laughs> from your side. Um, I have two small ones I would like to answer here at that point, and then I give you a short outlook. Um, mm -hmm. So first of all, maybe this can be answered in one sentence. Do you think actual length corneal ratio is a more accurate measurement than actual length than actual length with regards to myopia control? Yes. Yes. Okay, that was less than one <laughs> sentence. It was simply yes. No, but, <laughs> but, mm -hmm. uh, um, the axial length uh, corneal ratio is inside uh, myopia master. Maybe you can uh, explain a little bit more about that point, David. Yeah, exactly. That that's used for in the background calculation for uh, the pre uh, future estimation of the um, of the. Um, of the power um so of the refraction in the adulthood so we use exactly this in the myopia master because this helps of course because the the, the refraction of the cornea is, plays a big role as well 
Yeah. So to answer that better. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry. Then, sorry, David. I, I'm I'm pretty sure that uh, in, in in short time in the future we will start to to this to talk about axial length corneal radio ratio more than axial length in the next future because it's much more accurate. It could explain around seventy to eighty percent changes. Uh, and axial length alone, it could explain only 60 to 7 percent changes in, in total changes. So it's important because that helps us to understand if it's, a, it's a, is refractive or is axial in nature. So it's a really, really important, yeah. really important measurement. Yeah. yeah. Um, last question we do today. Um, so at first, uh, a thank from, from this participant um, for the wonderful presentation. He would like to know how far um, are we from a fully individual individualized orthocalans that maximize the treatment effort for individuals? And I think this is a beautiful question uh, um, uh, to, to use it as a last question today. Let's say um, in 10 years. <laughs> okay, brilliant. <laughs> no, I don't, not sure. Uh, we, we know, we know, um, we know something today. We have cues. We are really moving very fast. And we have plenty of articles that is appearing today that will help in the next future. First, we need to identify which shape in the treatment zone is really effective in which children in which one node. And then we need to change the shape of the devices to obtain that. We are working on that point, and I guess we will arrive very soon. But to to be hundred percent sure, maybe ten years. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Thank you very much, Jaume. Um, this was a brilliant talk. Also from my side, a thank you from the side of Oculus, and I believe from all participants, um, everybody who commented uh, uh, was very happy with your presentation. We are very happy because I think it was a beautiful presentation with a lot of content as well. I would like to share my screen for a second um, mm -hmm. because um, this is a short outlook. Some of you might know that guy, but not recognize him on this picture. This is Dr. Oliver Wu. Dr. Oliver Wu is the uh, is on a party here in Australia, ICCLC, and um, he will do our next talk, which will be in June uh, 9th, uh, that's Wednesday. In four weeks of roundabout. Uh, the title is How to Dance with the Myopia Master. And um, he's also a brilliant speaker who focuses more on the communication with the Myopia Master because this is exactly what Jaume told us from the beginning on. He said it's super, super important to uh, communicate correctly. And the Myopia Master helps, of course, at that place. Um, and um, Oliver Wu explains us uh, um, in a much better uh, and practical way how to do that uh, with his language, how to dance with the myopia master. And um, <clears throat> the second point is what he explains you is how to close a deal, because at the end, we all have to live. Um, how do you get children in the office? How do you charge for all that kind of stuff? And um, at the end, he would like to dance with you, to dance with us. And uh, um, the last point is um, we can dance and celebrate all together when managing myopia. And that's from our side. Thank you also from uh, our part, uh, from Oculus, um, for your attention, for your participation. We are very happy um, um, that you joined the meeting. And I hope you will be there in four weeks for the presentation of Dr. Oliver Wu. Um, so have a good evening, have a good afternoon, have a good night, wherever you are. Um, and um, yeah, um, thank you very much again. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, David, as well, to invite me. And I will I will see there about Oliver. I'm excited to see Oliver dancing with the Master. <laughs>